on this episode, Christian can change. I can change my brain. <laughs> he learns from the past. Last time around, I made that mistake. No longer the case. And so he finally adds something important to the master plan. Please take the game. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDiffs Academy. Welcome to episode 72. Man, that was a really tough episode that we had the last time around. And today, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on, you know, the debriefing of that episode. Let's just make a plan for our future. Let us move right away to the master plan. All right, the master plan. So um, the fourth goal was I want to create a few seconds of gameplay. We did that. We kind of did that. So that's done. Uh, we did the before. We did the autosave. We did the music and SF. Well, the sound effects, there are some things that we need to still fix, but um, it's fine. Um, we did create a few seconds of gameplay. Uh, and so there is like a bunch of things that we need to identify now. Do we need boss phases? Still haven't quite... Um, uh, quite figured out and like bosses spawning minions, right? Ba the boss question we haven't actually addressed at all because we haven't created a boss. So hmm. uh, that's something that we still don't know. Uh, small things, enemies scrolling in sync with the background, ground enemies, that's something that we actually figured out that we actually probably do. Um, maybe update splash and that these are small things, brain system left over, enemy go to look away. Okay, 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 okay. Let us take these things and let us create the fourth goal, uh, the fifth goal, <laughs> final fixes. Let's just call it final fixes. Uh, and we're gonna mark these as we're gonna uh, turn, we're gonna move them over to the next goal. So here are things that we need to do. And I have I have like a whole list on the side here that I'm gonna copy over to our to our um, goals to kind of like. And I'm gonna try to structure them because there's like lots of ideas, and I'm gonna put them like into different drawers, to kind of like to have an idea that. There's like different places in our program that we are working on right now. Some things are very fundamental. Some things are like gameplay related that we haven't figured out about our game. Some things are about, you know, the editors, mean some tweak some UI on the editors, smaller things, right? So I want to kind of like create like different, different boxes where I can put stuff in. Okay, so for example, there's a huge, uh, huge box that we're going to call game play questions right and for example there is a question there that i have here so the, the question is like a special ability question mark bomb question mark um also maybe do do we want a spread shot question mark right these are questions that i Notice that where I'm playing, I was like, oh, I feel like it needs a bit more juice, you know, it, it needs a little bit of a wrinkle, like it seems a little bit too basic. I feel I don't don't have enough abilities uh, or or like, um, yeah, like verbs, so to speak, or things that I can do except from shooting, right? It would be nice if there was something else than just like purely shooting. Um, and... There is another thing that goes hand in hand with that, and that is going to be um, mm, uh, pickups. Uh, there is then another another question that goes hand in hand in hand with that, and that is scoring. We don't have any kind of scoring thing happening, so these are like big design kind, or like let's let's call them design questions. And with scoring, we also maybe want to have UI for uh, scoring. But it's kind of like related to scoring. We need to have first figure out the UI, uh, the scoring system before we go to the scoring. Although we might, there might, there's probably going to be a score, right? So there's going to be a number that we need to, should maybe already draw on the screen. I don't know. These are just like some some questions. All right. So then I had I already talked about this. I had like this this box here called um, editor fixes, and you know what? I'm this tutorial is getting really, really long. And at this point, like, I think more people are interested in, you know, how I do things like, like the way, like the philosophical approach of making a game and less about the exact code that I'm typing in. So I'm planning to do the editor fixes all like in one episode and just fast forward to this stuff. Fumbling around with the editor is not necessarily, you know, great tutorial content at this point, you know, 70 episodes into a tutorial, right? So for example, we're going to need 
uh, an edit enemy preview an edit animation pre preview would be also nice brain edit deleting brains should be easier although that's not a high priority i have to say brain edit better on staging uh, we had that problem that if we spawn the um, enemies off screen which is quite often something that happens throughout the gameplay but if we do that in a brain editor they would just not appear so we want to actually replicate the on staging from the game in the brain editor so we get more um, realistic previews of what the enemy movement will be looking like in the game uh, also brain edit i'm just gonna copy this out man copy brain uh, quite often we need we want to just like make a copy and tweak around so yeah copy brain now next up there is like there's editor fixes but there's also like system fixes system foxes system fixes which means like fundamental changes to our system and i'm gonna write down something that i want to like immediately like like right away keep in mind don't break the game <laughs> Uh, or the level um, so whatever change we do to our systems is great but we also want to make sure that our level remains playable that our game that our level that we created remains playable because we need that level to answer those design questions right we want to evolve our systems for sure but we don't want to make it so that they're no longer backwards compatible with the level that we already created so that's something to keep in mind. And so something that I immediately wanted to have is I wanted to have um, um, brain decisions on spawn level. So when I spawn an enemy, I want to decide which brain that enemy has there when I spawn it. Not, it shouldn't be baked into the enemy itself. That's because I realized that uh, quite often I have popcorn enemies and there's like always the same enemy but with very different behaviors and there's like you know five behaviors all linked to the same enemy and I, then I would have to create like five different copies of the same enemies and that's tedious to do and it's easier to just say like spawn this enemy with this brain so I want to do that uh, there's also here something I don't know if I need this but sked it uh, breaks when no enemies I don't need that. It's it's a very let's let's do a low pro, low prior. Uh, it's a low priority because um, there's not going to be a lot of situations where this happens. <laughs> I would also say that um, deleting brains. Yeah, that's also probably sh that should be a low prior. Uh, system fixes more stuff. I want to easily manipulate pet bullet. Speed. So um, hmm, th this is a bit of a difficult thing. Uh, right now we have like those basic bullets and they fly at a certain speed. And then I take the basic bullets and put a modifier on top and create like resulting patterns. Quite often in those resulting patterns, I want to tweak the bullet speed. And right now the only way to do this is to do like a pattern in between, so to speak. And, and you kind of have to also abuse the, the spread pattern for that. And I, I want to maybe have like a property with a spread pattern, just an additional property that's just like an initial bullet modifier or a multiplier. So it's like before we do any kind of modification, we're just going to tweak the bullet speed and then we're going to do the spread. Um, I think that's a good idea. And we might also do this on the burst as well. Okay, so now I want to maybe add a new box, which is kind of like uh, new systems or new... System is maybe sometimes too much of a word, but new new things. New th let's just call it new things. <laughs> new things to work on. Uh, one of the things, uh, dead zones. So I want to make it so that enemies below a certain threshold are no longer firing. Now, going back to the editor fixes, I have something here. Um, Skedit. Um, undo, 
It would be kind of nice. Move, undo especially. When I move things around and I break something, I want to be able to like undo this. Quite often I feel that I clicked something and then suddenly I broke something and I'm like, oh no. Um, and also sked it. Um, click move moves enemy not spawn, right? Um, so so I can actually click where the enemy, enemy is supposed to be at this point in time and not where its spawning location is supposed to be, right? I'm not sure if this system, system fix or more like a new thing, but um, enemy mirroring. So we notice that we sometimes have brains and we want, and they go like from left to right. And we're just gonna want, gonna go make them go from right to left, and we don't want to create a separate brain for that. We just want to just mirror the entire thing, right? And so that would be nice if we could do that on a level of spawns and not on a level of brains, so we don't have to create that many brains. So yeah, enemy mirroring is something that we need. Oh wait, wait, wait! I noticed that zone is not the thing that I, because I also have cut off. Mm, okay, so that zone was something else. That zone was the fact that enemies that are not quite on the screen just yet are not getting hit in the first place. Cut off is where enemies are that are too low on the screen are no longer shooting. We need both, and these are new things. All right, and again, I'm not sure. I think this is going to be uh, the next thing belongs uh, kind of like to new things, and that is ground enemies. Yeah, we noticed that we probably want to have enemies that are just locked to the ground. And then they move around, but all the movement is also relative to the ground and not relative to the screen. We want that. And uh, there's actually more associated with that. For example, the fact that we are now, right now, the tanks that are on the ground, we can fly over them and, and we collide with the tanks on the ground. And we want to be able to fly ob over the enemies. And that's not quite possible right now. So, yeah, um, let me write down the things that we need there. Move movement relative to ground and then drawing order so we want to draw the enemies underneath the player which i right now i don't think it's that's not quite the case i think and then a uh, collision uh we need to the collision has to work differently on the ground enemies and if we have ground enemies then we also probably need to also do ceiling ceiling question mark maybe Next up, uh, we need to do, we have talked about maybe hover effect slash ground shadow. Well, I've, I kind of like, I feel like, especially with the big enemies, it would be nice if there was a ground shadow under the big enemies. enemies and if there's a ground shadow, it would be nice if the enemies would be kind of like moving up and down. There's a lot of, that's a lot of systems that, <laughs> that we're thinking about there. Okay, so pat edit, pat edit. Copy pattern. We don't have that, like the bullet pattern editor. Right, now new things. Ground enemies hover effect, bullet canceling. We need that as well. For the big enemies, it would be nice if the bullets were destroyed. And then another new thing. Um, bullets not from center of sprite. We kind of like already had like this idea and when we created a big enemy with the two streams um, shooting out, they were shooting out of the center of the sprite. This didn't look so nice. It would be nice if we could change the position from which the bullets are firing and maybe even have multiple positions. That would be all cool. Uh, there's like a new, this doesn't really, this, this is not really a new thing. Let's just put it to, to small, let's, let's put it to fixes. Let's just put it to fixes. Um, the explosions are quite repetitive. It would be nice if you have multiple explosion sounds and so slightly different pitched, so they sound slightly different, so it's not always the same sound playing. And it would be nice if the enemies were also playing shooting sounds. Right, that is all I have. Just a few little fixes. Now, oh, and by the way, we also need to take these, um, these things that we have here. Uh, we're gonna put those into those design questions. Do we need boss phases? Uh, and um, boss spawning minions, is that something that we need? And then here, um, ground enemies we already kind of have in there. Update splash and mass and draw, maybe. Uh, oh, brain system left over, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's put this in, in uh, fixes. Enemy, enemy brain, enemy go to location command. Yeah, we need that for sure. Uh, and 
maybe update splash and mass and draw. Let's 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 put that in here. I don't know if you want to solve, solve this here. Uh, there's one more thing that I noticed somebody wrote um, a comment that I thought was really cool, and I'm going to put this into fixes. Um, we can merge spread and burst. There is a way in which we can get the spread modifier and the burst modifier merged into one, which actually just collapses the amount of modifiers we have just to like <laughs> one. <laughs> Which our all my entire our entire pattern system has been just collapsed to just one modifier. Just we just, this is just like insanely uh, versatile and can create all sorts of patterns. But we're going to talk about this when we get there. Okay, so this is broadly speaking, broadly speaking, the planning for our next phase. Let me let me make this a little bit more visual here. So these are the final fixes, and then the sixth goal. The sixth goal after we're done with that stuff. I mean, we probably have to gonna have to go back and forth a couple of times, but the sixth goal, broadly speaking, is gonna be make the game. <laughs> Just actually repeat this process again, but actually for reals now, and then actually make the actual game. We're gonna talk about that when we get through this uh, to-do list. It's a substantial to-do list, but some of these things are kind of small, like especially like the uh, editor fixes. This is all probably just gonna be one big episode. This is my plan. This is just gonna be one big episode where I just fast forward through this stuff. But I think something that is more interesting for you is for me, it's like especially these things, these design questions, right? How do we figure out what's the process the, uh, by which we can figure out, you know, how to design a special ability, um, what do, how do we do pickups and so forth. The pickups, for example, is this kind of stuff. This will need a system. We will have to create a pickup system. But also, we also have to figure out what the pickups do and how they behave. There's visual effects associated with that. There's a lot of stuff associated with all those things. These are, these are hard. Most of these questions here are hard. These are easy. These things are easy. These things, oh, these are very easy. These are kind of easy. These things are mid. We can figure them out. These are not hard to figure out. Uh, now, I have to also say that we kind of have to do things in order. So for example, it would, be, make, would make sense maybe to do the very easy editor fixes first. But the problem is that changing the systems will also change the editors. So I first actually want to modify the systems because they will probably also require us to tinker around with the editors so they work with the new systems. And one, once the underlying systems have been changed, then I will work on the editors, and then I'm gonna expand, you know, to uh, to add new things, add new systems, and so forth. And then once everything is in place, I will have like a, a slate, like a blank slate. Now I have a level that works with, you know, with all those sticks and so forth. And now I can find out, create like maybe little prototypes that will allow me to figure out those hard design questions. Right. So probably in the order of things will be something like this. First we do the fixes, then we do the editor fixes. Let's just bring it back to system fixes. Uh, then we add a bunch of new things, and then we're gonna do the design questions. Now let me like write right away in here, let me just like uh, order things a little bit. So this is brain decision on spawn level, so this will affect the spawning. Um, enemy mirroring is also something that, we, that will affect the spawning. This is, this is pattern. Then there's a bunch of sound stuff. This is brain. Breath and burst, this is pattern. I'm gonna put this into the schedule because the schedule is kind of like the brain decision. This is schedule and brain together, I think. And then we have like this awkward leftover <laughs> about the splash and ma. I don't know, maybe maybe we, we're just gonna not do it. Uh, and I'm gonna actually move some, some stuff, stuff around. I think the ground enemies, I know these are new things. But I think when we're working with a schedule and brain, like when we're doing surgery on the schedule and brain editor, why not uh, already implement, think about implementing grant enemies? We, no, these things are not as easily separable from each other, right? Sometimes tweaking a system and adding a new system, is, 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 these are kind of like connected. This is not the same thing as saying like, oh, I'm gonna add a shadow, you know? That's, that's a different thing. Okay, okay. Um, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're gonna have to do a bunch of schedule um, and brain system things. There's gonna be a stuff that we're gonna do with the pattern, and then there down here we're gonna tweak around with the sounds, and then there's a little question that we have to figure out here. Cool. Let us start right away, and let us jump into the brain pattern and schedule system stuff. All right. So let me go to the schedule editor, and there's a. There's a thing that happened. I recorded this whole thing. I implemented this whole feature and it didn't record my screen <laughs> for some reason. So I have to do it again. Oh no. Okay, so we need to do a brain decision on a spawn level and we need to do a enemy mirroring. These are two things that we that need to happen on here in, in, in Skedit. So let me just start implementing them right away. We want to basically add a um, override, a brain override on the spawn level. Right now we have four numbers associated with an enemy spawn. The time, the enemy type, the enemy type that we're spawning, X and Y. We want to add now bloop, a fifth, an optional fifth uh, number that sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't happen. That fifth number, if, if it's there, it will override, it will override the default brain of that enemy. Each enemy will still have a default brain, don't worry. But just some enemies will just have a <coughs> tweaked uh, tweaked brain. They will have a different brain from the, from the regular stuff. And the way we're gonna do this is gonna be really simple. The way it's already here, we have like the UI here, right? Zero two. We just want to have like a second selector uh, underneath that will select the brain. And usually the brain is gonna be the same currently in, the, in this, this, this stuff here. We are creating new enemy for a new brain, so each brain is actually the same thing as the enemy. Uh, but later on, we might want to change that. Let me let me show you where we do this. So here's a drop down menu, and I I know I said that I'm not going to fumble around too much with editors, but the systems and editors are so interlinked that when we change a system, we also have to change the editor. Uh, right. So we're adding a new menu now. Something that we need to do is we want to make sure that it's actually. The Y position is correct. I'm learning. Last time around, I made that mistake. No longer the case. So now we we basically have. Oops, something happened. Something happened. That was not good. Oh, we haven't closed the, the bracket here. Um, right. So now when you click on it, we have two selectors. Not quite two selectors. Oh yeah, because I added to X, but it should be up to Y. Little, little thing, but we got there. Okay, so we have two selectors now, right? So what I want to do right now, because right now I can change the type of the enemy, but now I want to change the brain independent of the enemy type. Um, first of all, we need to kind of like, this is, this is gonna get a little bit complicated. So we're gonna go local burn, local brain. Uh, we're gonna get cell sked, cell sked five. This is gonna be the fifth entry. The fifth entry in our our schedule, our scheduled spawn, right? But some of the spawns will not have will have nil in the fifth entry. So we need to do like an or here. We're gonna do like this ternary combination thing. And now, if for those enemies that don't have anything in the fifth entry, we're gonna grab that from the enemy menu, the the enemy library and lib, right? So we're gonna do something like. A local my n equals nlib square brackets uh, cells get two and then it's going to be nlib and we have to look up uh, in the enemy library uh, I have to write it down uh, brain was entry number three um, my n Enter number three. Okay, so uh, this is the brain, and then we're gonna draw that brain to the screen, and it's gonna be easy peasy for breezy. Uh, let's see. Let me click on this. Now we don't see a difference. We don't see it. it's the same. It's literally the same, and, and we cannot change it right now because <laughs> because it's it's still uh, it's still the move and oh wait not not move and where is it? It's still the end type, but now we have to change it to a different. They will have to change the button to a different command. We're not long, no longer interested in changing the type of the enemy. Now we want to change the brain of the enemy. So n brain. We're going to call this n brain. Uh, and actually, 
I'm gonna copy these things because these are these are smart lines. We're gonna copy those smart lines over. Now let's go to the update function. Let's make it so that we can actually interact with that menu. So here's where we can change the type. I'm gonna paste these things in here. I'm gonna copy that entire thing out. Uh, I'm gonna go else if, and I'm gonna copy these these bad boys in here. Okay, because we're gonna need them in a sec. Don't worry, don't worry. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so um, this stuff is about interaction with this kind of brain overwrite thing, right? So we're going to go if uh, cmd equals n brain, um, then we're going to get the sked, we're going to get the enemy, and the brain is going to be either the sked or the enemy. Cool. And then we're gonna decrease the brain. We're gonna increase the brain in this case. And then we're gonna make sure that this brain is in a valid range. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, at least one, the brain, or, and we don't have brains here, but we have trails. So we can just use trails instead. I mean, we should have a trail for every brain. It's gonna be fine. Uh, and uh, okay, so this is basically making sure that we have a valid brain selected. And then we're going to go if brn, if that's equal, uh, if that's equal to default enemy stuff, then, because if we set the brain override to the default brain of that enemy anyway, then that means that enemy just has the default brain. Uh, and that means that we actually don't need this, the fifth entry. I'm going to go cell get because the fifth entry is optional, as I said. Cell get 5 uh, equals nil right um but if it's different then we're gonna sell get five equals burn like this this is, is what i'm thinking let me let me see if this works uh so this is there our enemy this is going to be our test enemy it is currently enemy number two and it uses enemy in brain number two because right now brains and enemies are the same thing basically and we want to disentangle those two so we want to have now this the enemy number one but brain number two uh, there we go, like this. Now we're going to export this because it didn't autosave. I'm going to run this again. We're going to see if this gets saved uh, in the first place. Yep, it gets saved. Because the way we've written the I.O. function, it just takes whatever is in the in the array and just dumps it into the text file. It doesn't question how many entries there are. We can add, just add entries and it will the I.O. function the, will just write everything into the text file. It's fine. Before we continue, I wanted to get this code out because as you can as you saw you can change the brains using the keyboards but you cannot use it change it using the mouse and I want to be able to change it using the mouse um, I think it's UI yeah 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 uh, do button it's here in do button uh, here is edit n no here n type we just want to basically copy this n type stuff. I'm going to paste uh, the... It's going to be a bit chaotic. Don't worry. Do not be afraid. <laughs> In brain. Uh, we have the sket. That's good. Uh, so we don't need this. We do need this. So we're going to get the sket. We're going to get our enemy. We're going to get calculate our brain. Now we're going to decrease the brain. We're going to increase the brain. So that was this part. And then I'm gonna make sure that the brain is a useful brain. Oh, by the way, dirty. We have forgotten about the dirty stuff. And then we're gonna, here we're gonna manipulate the actual fifth entry, that brain overwrite entry. We're gonna add it in here. Cool. Uh, dirty equals true. Uh, that's actually a cool thing to, to have. So let's let's put it, let's put it in here. We have, if we change the type, using the keyboards uh, until now that actually didn't set our data to dirty now i want to set our data to dirty like this right so let me see if we can change yes i can change i can change my brain <laughs> my brain has been changed i'm sorry i've been i'm doing this the second time around now <laughs> so, okay good so we have like now the um second brain thing happening here. 
Um, now the problem is we are now doing this brain overwrite, but the brain overwrite is not doing anything, right? It's just like we're just manipulating some data in a table, but the data doesn't, doesn't actually feed into anything. Uh, and there's two places where it needs to actually change something. One is right here in the editor. We want to actually see a preview of that new brain right, right there happening, right? So we, right now we don't see that preview. Uh, so let me, let me, oops. Okay, the gen ends, okay. Right, so here's we're getting the enemy local burn equals five or n three. Right, that was the either the override, and if the override is sell, sell, set to nothing, then we're gonna get the default brain of that enemy, and then we're gonna dump that burn in here. And that is basically it. So now when I change the brain, you can see the enemy is changing. Now the brain number one and two, they're basically the same thing. Uh, brain number one is moving down and shooting. Brain number two is moving down without shooting. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So you can see that these like changing from one to two doesn't change anything. But if I change to three and four and five and six, you know, the enemy is moving all sorts of different directions because now we're using a different trail for the preview because we changed the underlying brain of the enemy. Cool. Just let's set it to two for now. Uh, I'm going to export it. I'm going to save this. Uh, and I'm going to go to uh, our coach map. So let pay attention to those enemies. See, one of them is shooting. And that's bad. This means that that enemy is enemy number one using brain number one. Uh, we want it to be enemy number one, but using brain number two. So that's uh, something that we need to uh, address right now. Uh, we're gonna call, uh, let's call, I think it's spawn n. Is it spawn n? There we go. Here's where we're spawning a new enemy. We're spawning index, uh, the enemy type, and x and y position. We now also want to be NB. That's the enemy brain. And then we, here, when we're setting the brain, we're going to set NB or enemy number three. And this works because when we are calling spawn N, we're actually some, doing something very smart. Uh, we're just unpacking. <laughs> we're just unpacking that the data that we had there, just like dumping it into the function. So if there's additional entries at the end there, uh, they will get dumped into the subsequent. Um, parameters of the function. So if you just create a set another parameter, that's where entry number five of that spawning line will land. And so if it's set to something, it will get assigned to brain. Otherwise, we're just going to get the default brain from the enemy uh, stuff. So now we should see no bullets. Hey, no bullets. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and that was it. That was the, the implementation of our brain override. But of course, we are far from being done. But for now, we're going to close up this episode. There's a lot of st more stuff coming up. Um, for now, I want to give a big shout out and a huge thank you to all the people who are supporting the show on coffee.com. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Really, really appreciate it. And also, I wanted to read out in your comment. This is one, uh, another one from uh, the GO124. This one is from episode um, 33. The way I did it was using PASCII. Uh, by I did it, um, they mean uh, the... Um, when uh, we had like the space jam function that generates a string that repeats a certain character a certain number of times. Um, so one of the control codes is slash star and C where N is a number of repeats and C is a character. Therefore, you can make a length of spaces doing this. <laughs> Slight problem arises when you want to do more than nine characters for the repeat, but I think that won't be a problem for a seeable future. Excellent suggestion. I love it. This is, this is so nice and, and I just 
for, completely forgot about this, but yeah, you can totally do this. You can collapse that entire function to something that's very sh short and small. I love the suggestions. However, you have to also keep in mind, this is the editor, so like optimizing stuff and making everything nice and compact is not that important for the editor. Uh, if this was in a game, that would be like a game changer. Right now, it's just a cool little trick that I have to keep in mind. Thank you so much for the suggestion. All right, all right, all right. Our plan is set. We are going through the changes, through the fixes. More of that on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.